Hey friend, welcome to the Pursuing Goals God's Way podcast. I'm your host, Gabe Cox, and I am thrilled that you are hanging out with me today. I thought it would be fun to bring you a conversation with my friend and fellow podcaster, Kate House of the Live by Design podcast, as we dive into the art of ending the year on a high note. In this heartfelt conversation from the Empowered Self Summit that we had earlier this fall, We share our personal journeys of balancing various roles and responsibilities without succumbing to the all too tempting desire to hustle. My goal today is to help you eliminate the myth that you have to go all in, sacrifice everything and hustle, hustle, hustle to hit your goals. And my secret hope is that this inspires you to move forward with a scary goal, whether it's to start an online business or to do something you've always dreamt of, but had too much fear holding you back. This conversation promises actionable advice, meaningful reflection, and inspiring insights on effective time and resource management to finish the year strong. So let's dive in together. Hey friend, welcome to Pursuing Goals God's Way. Have you thought about finally starting that business now that your kids are older? Do you ever stay awake wondering how to mesh your passions into purposeful work? Do you have big, ambitious goals but feel overwhelmed or even unqualified to pursue them? Hey, I'm Gabe. Not too long ago, I longed for the confidence to start an online business. I just wanted to make a difference outside my home bubble using my gifts. But I kept telling myself that I wasn't good enough. I didn't know enough and I didn't have enough time until I realized something huge. My kids need me to be their example and they need to see me win. And yours do too. In this podcast, you will learn how to clarify your goals, plan with purpose and ditch your distractions. If you're ready to make an impact and an income, all for the glory of God, then you're in the right place. As an avid runner, I believe life is one massive marathon. It's up to you to run your own race and to finish it well. So lace up those running shoes, pop in your earbuds, and let's do this thing. And I'd love to know, what does it mean to you personally to end the year strong? Like if you were to think forward to the end of 2023, which is crazy that we're already like nearing the end of the year when this episode drops, uh, what it, what does it mean to you to feel like, how does it feel? What does it look like to end the year strong? For me, ending the year strong means that I put it all out there in the sense that I made progress toward the goals that I had for the year, but also that it aligned with my values and priorities that I kept those center in what I'm doing, because a lot of times I feel like we can just get off track or get distracted or just go all in and have too much hustle and not have the balance that comes I mean, motherhood. We are not very balanced, right? But, (laughs) but balance to me means that I put my values and priorities first. So that would be me finishing my year strong. Oh, I love that. And that's actually the perfect way to really dive into our conversation today here at the summit. We're really keeping these episodes really um, concise. So our listeners and our summit attendees can just dive right in and get all the goodness. And so you've actually already touched on balance, which is what we're going to chat about today. Cause you know, we have so many things that we balance in our regular day to day lives, but I feel like as the end of the year comes, there's like, you know, the holidays and family and all these different um, obligations, which like are maybe really fun, but our time gets really taxed and energetically we can feel really taxed. So I would love to know, what does it mean to you for how do we like create a sense of balance during this season where we can prioritize both like our self-care and like loving ourselves well, um, and really let go of that, like holiday, holiday hustle culture. Mm, yeah. I don't like holiday hustle at all. <laughs> My, people are like, Oh, what are you doing? I'm going um, as little as possible really. Uh, so, but you know, one of my goals is to really help eliminate the myth that you have to go all in and sacrifice everything and hustle, hustle, hustle to either hit your goals or to be a good mom or to do all these things. Right. And so part of that really does come with what I just shared was lining up our values and priorities in the season we're in. And so one way to create that balance, to be able to take care of yourself. And one of the biggest things I think of taking care of yourself is to know your limits Mm -hmm. and your boundaries. And um, so one way to do that would be to essentially do a Venn diagram, if you know what that is, where you have the circles and things, but to really put in a circle of your values and a circle of your priorities and a circle of your goals, right? Because yes, we want to be always moving and growing. And I don't know, you're a, you're an achiever like me. You always have to be <laughs> doing something, I'm sure. And so, but seeing kind of what 
aligns, right? Mm -hmm. But then also taking a kind of a reflection of what do I have on my plate right now? So like listing out all the responsibilities, Mm -hmm. um, which come with work or kids or activities or extra roles that we put ourselves in, volunteer, volunteering at the school, that counts, right? Um, And just looking at it and going, okay, does each of these activities align with my priorities and values that I have here? What does and what doesn't? What do I have to do? What is What am I doing that I don't maybe have to do that maybe I just want to? And what am I doing that I'm just filling space, right? Yeah. And then kind of thinking about what maybe do I need to let go of in this season so that I can create that space to be able to have that time for myself to take care of myself, have that time to be present with my family. Um, and I just think we can do a lot of things. We just can't do everything at once. And sometimes we try to pack in everything because we know we're good at it. We know, oh, I want to help with this. Oh, I want to help with that. I mean, I could go on a tangent on what I used to do and the roles I used to have. But um, we have to remember that we can only do so much and we have to set those boundaries in order to have that balance and that peace. Mm, Oh, I love that, Gabe. It reminds me of the book Essentialism by Greg McGowan. And one of his main things that he talks about is doing less but better. And I really, I feel like a lot of what you're saying, I'm hearing that I'm like, all right, let's do less, but let's do it better. So we're not so distracted. We're not so exhausted. We're not feeling drained energetically, mentally, emotionally, physically, you know, all the different things. Um, Can you give us an example of what are some of those things that you have let go of in the past that you're like, okay, I need to create a little bit more space in my day and in my week for myself. Um, What are some of those things that you're like, you know what, maybe this isn't the right season for that. Mm-hmm. And I, you know, I think every season we have to evaluate that because a lot of times we'll take something off and then a month later we'll add something. And that really mm-hmm. didn't help the situation. <laughs> and so one of the things I learned this lesson a few years back when I broke my ankle, I think we've talked about that before a little bit, but I was like told stop. Literally I had to stop because I couldn't do anything. And at that time I was in multiple roles. Like I was homeschooling my kids still. I was working, I think a few different jobs. Like I was coaching gymnastics. I was coaching running. I was um, building my, I was I building my business at the time? I think I was building my business at the time. I was the director of our homeschool community. I was the president of our booster club for gymnastics. Like all the places that I could be, <laughs> I had my hands in every little fire that I could because I like control. And I like being a part of it. I like be seeing the behind the scenes, right? And um, some of you might be like that as well. But what I learned in that time was that I needed to be able to let go of some of that because I was just hustle, hustle, hustle. And I burned out, burned mm-hmm. out really hard. And it's really hard to come back from that. Like there's a lot of emotion that comes with that. There's a lot of just physical ailments that come with that. <laughs> and so what I did is I kind of did that, um, reset. Like I know we're going to talk about resting and different things, but I did this hard reset of, I just need to stop and rest for a minute and then figure out this balance. And so I started letting go of different things. I didn't really need to be the director of our homeschool community anymore. I liked it. I liked being the leader, right? (laughs) People liked me too. And you know, it, it was a hard transition. So I let that go. And then I let go of, um, I didn't let go of coaching. I liked the coaching aspect, but I let go of being the president of the booster club. And because that was just an extra thing that I need. And, and it didn't take that much time a week, but it took mental space in my brain. And so sometimes it's like, oh, well, I'm only letting go of this. It's only an hour a week. Is that really going to make a difference? But it clears some mental space and that makes all the difference in the world. And so, but what's kind of funny about that story is I did those things and then within the next like six months, we found out we were moving to Colorado. If I hadn't made some of those transitions, it would have been a lot harder to make that move. Our move was super quick. It was eight weeks from when we said, maybe we'll move to when we actually sold our house. (laughs) (laughs) And so, and I had no plans of that, but, but it's funny to see how that aligns though. When we make those decisions, it like makes room for something new and there wouldn't have been room for that. 
Mm, oh, that's such a great reminder. Cause you know, how often do we, we pack our schedules full, but I really appreciate your mentioning too the mental space, right. That, you know, you don't even that role, if it only takes an hour each week, but it takes up that room in your mind, right. You're thinking about the upcoming meeting or the agenda or the person you didn't get back to, or whatever the case might be. Um, and it's not only taking up room on your calendar, but like in your mind. And that's such a great reminder that when we create space, these opportunities can come that maybe before would have felt a little overwhelming. And I think the holiday season and ending the year strong can kind of feel like that too. If we, we say yes to every single thing or every obligation, or we take everything to like the 100th degree, um, we, we don't leave that room to breathe and to just be. And so I would love to know, can we, can we talk a little bit about, I love how you mentioned rest, uh, because so often, especially at the end of the year, I find I am, I am prone to doing this. I'm like, well, I'll just stay up a little later to wrap the presents or bake more cookies or <laughs> like put the ornaments on the tree, you know, whatever it is. Um, the first thing that I like nix for my self-care routine is rest when really that should be the thing I should be prioritizing the most. At least I've learned that for myself personally. So can you talk to us a little bit about like, why rest? Why is that so important? Um, and, and what does that look like for you? Mm -hmm. So the most important factor for having energy to take action on your goals or to be present or to have balance is rest. And it's so funny because that is not the first go-to that we have. That's not the first go-to I have because I sit on the couch for five minutes and I'm antsy. I'm already twiddling my thumbs going, I got to go do something. (laughs) But it is so important because rest is where you're going to refuel your creativity and your motivation. It's a place of like calming. It's a place of just being. And I I would say rest is even harder in this season because of technology, because we have phones at our fingertips and just everything that we want. We have AI now talking and doing things for us. It's just crazy. And so people, when we rest, They're like, oh, I'm resting. I'm sitting on the couch and I'm scrolling Facebook. No, 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 no. You're not resting your mind. And resting our mind is literally creating that white space where there's nothing. When my kids tell me I'm bored, I'm like, great. I'm so glad (laughs) they don't like me when I say that, but it's true. It's like, it's okay to be bored and we don't want to be bored. We want instant gratification. We want entertainment 24 seven. But when we have entertainment 24 seven, then we are not refueling ourselves. We're not being able to get into that creative space or um, have, I don't know for you, Kate, for me, when I go out on a run, I know you like to run too. A lot of times when I don't listen to anything, because I do like to listen to podcasts or music and stuff, but when I don't is when I get these revelations or when maybe God even speaks to me in a way, you know, like something comes to mind or a verse comes to mind or whatnot. And I'm like, wow, okay. So then I'll go like, look at it, but that wouldn't happen if I wouldn't have created that time to do it. Mm -hmm. Um, And so even in quiet time, that's why I feel like quiet time is so important. Like just diving into the word or um, just sitting in prayer or meditation or whatnot, and just um, having that kind of restful state so that we can have these uh, epiphanies, these revelations, these um, ideas, you know, all my ideas have come when I've been quiet. Mm -hmm. Um, And I think for the holiday season, We can get into this, oh, I got to get decorations. I got to get gifts. I got to do all this and I got to do this. And now I'm hosting and now I have to do plan dinner. And and we kind of get into, uh, I would say, Martha mode, (laughs) if you're familiar (laughs) with the Martha and Mary story in the Bible, where we're just doing, 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 and it's the hustle, hustle, hustle. And, um, you know, and if there is a time and place for that, but there's also a time to be merry where you're just resting at the feet of Jesus and just being. And I think that's the one of the most important thing we can do to take care of ourselves. Mm, absolutely. Yeah. Cause how often is like our mind going a million miles and we're like adding more notes to our phone of the things that we have to do. And I really appreciate your reminder too, of just like resting isn't necessarily sitting on your phone, right? Like I recently in the last like year have gotten really back into reading fiction, like for the luck. I mean, I, I love me a good personal growth book, but I was reading so many of them and not leaving time to really digest and implement what I had learned. So I started doing what I called buffer books. And so I would read like a growth oriented book. And then I would read just like a fun book, like a totally frivolous, very fun book. Now they're like my favorite kinds of books to read. And I've gone down the like romanticy rabbit hole, but 
to bring it back to our conversation, what I do at night is when I sit down to read, I put my phone like on my kitchen island. I put my smartwatch over there. Like I don't turn on the TV. Like I might play a little, like I love like a little bit of classical music in the background. That's from my grandma used to do that. So it reminds me of her, but I just sit there. And like, if something comes to my mind, I can't just like pull up my phone and Amazon something, or I can't like Google, something. you know, like it forces me to be really present and to just like be where my feet are. And there's something so wonderful about that of just disconnecting a little bit and being really present. And I feel like during the holiday season, especially we have that desire to be present with the people we love and, and to be in the moment and not having our minds be like going 10 other, (laughs) 10 other places. Um, And I know for me, that's something that's challenging. So yeah, like reading, journaling, meditating, um, going for a run. Absolutely. My best ideas come to me on runs (laughs) or going for a walk are all things that really help. Okay. There really are no emergencies. And I think sometimes we just want to stay ahead and that we get caught, especially as a business owner, we get caught in the, there's always something to do. So if our if we get something done, it's like, oh, let's go to the next thing without thinking about these time blocks of what we have mm-hmm. and knowing that this is not an emergency. It can be done later. Um, and so uh, my encouragement is to say, one, this is one thing that I learned. I actually he- heard this, not audibly, but it was like, if you give that up, someone else can do it and maybe mm-hmm. they can do it better, you know, because I had so much on my plate that. I wasn't giving my all to each thing where you said you were, we were just talking about before, if you had a couple of things, you can do them better. Mm-hmm. And so I wasn't giving someone else the opportunity to grow and lead. And so my encouragement is it's, it'll be okay. It's kind of like the whole, um, if you want your dishes to be done the exact way you want, you're going to have to do it every time. But if you're mm-hmm. willing to give that up and let someone else do it their way, then you save some space like that, that takes something off your plate. Right. And so in order to just, just be okay. And as soon as you start letting one thing go, it's easier to let other things go. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you're not just doing it to let go of things and to have nothing you're doing it to create space for what you have, but also for new opportunities that might come that are right opportunities. Mm, Oh, I love that so much. I'm like laughing to myself as you talk about the dishes. Cause I'm like, uh huh. <laughs> I definitely love to do things a specific way. And I'm like, no, if we want the dishes to get done, like my husband and I, who both have different ways of doing them, like we're just, gonna, it's just going to get done. Right. Like done is better than perfect. And I really appreciate this reminder of just letting go of needing to have all the control and creating that space and that time for things to kind of evolve naturally and, and to create that space for new opportunities. And I, I really appreciate too, how you mentioned maybe letting go of a role that we have, allow somebody else to step into it. And how beautiful is that, right? To allow, to give somebody else that opportunity to grow and to learn and to step into their leadership role or whatever the case might be. So Gabe, as we wind down this conversation, I have been asking all of our summit speakers the same question. And that is, what is one thing that our summit attendees can implement right away to support them finishing the year strong? Specifically, we're really focusing this year on energy, intention, and focus. So what would that like doable self-care practice that maybe we could even do in a small amount of time look like for you? So the one habit that I would say, and this comes with uh, refueling and resetting in order to be able to start the new year well, but is to implement a weekly reset. Um, and that would mean, I would say also if one thing that you can do in five minutes is have five minutes of white space. So start mm-hmm. there and go, I'm going to set the timer for five minutes. And I'm going to sit on the couch or I'm going to lay down or I'm going to meditate, whatever you want to do, right. For five minutes. And it's really hard that first five minutes, but do it every day and start creating a habit of it. And you're going to start liking it and you're going to start finding different places to have those white spaces. Um, or like when you're driving, don't put on a, don't put on music, just have it be quiet for a minute while you're by, by, if you're by yourself, you know, just dropping kids off at activities, that's one thing. But then the actual reset, I think the reset's really, really important. So if you can implement this, it doesn't take long. It's a five to 10 minute thing each week, but pick a day, whether it's, Friday, wrapping up your week. So you don't have to do it on the weekend or it's Sunday evening. I like to do it Sunday evening. Cause that's when I start my thinking and planning of the week, but really looking at what are the commitments I have this week, make kind of putting it in the calendar and then also looking at, okay, where can I put space for myself and actually set an appointment in there 
and then show up for yourself. I do that with my running. So every morning that I run, I put it in there. So I know when it's going to be, but it's a lot easier for me to show up because I know I've created that space for it. And so that's what I would say is that weekly reset's really important. Maybe it's planning the meals. So sometimes my calendar, I'm, I'm kind of writing out my work one and it just has my work appointments and anything I'm in charge of. So I'm picking up kids from these activities and then I'll create my fun ones. I even highlight in different colors what they are so I can see, oh, pink is my fun one. And I don't like pink. I don't know why I pick pink, but anyway, <laughs> pink is my fun one. I get to talk to my friend on Wednesday afternoons at 4.15, you know, and so um, you get to see that. And if you have it kind of planned out, then you can see, okay, do I have enough white space in there? And if I don't, okay, I need to kind of evaluate what might need to come off my plate. But that would be my encouragement is to start there. Mm, oh, I love that. I'm like loving this because back to school season is my favorite. Cause I'm like, let's get all the colorful pens. Let's get all the fun highlighters. And there's nothing I love more than having a plan for the week and having it be color coded. So you're like speaking my love language. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And then having it somewhere you can see it, right? Like yes. I have mine out so that I can look at it at least once a day. So I, it's not just not being used. Yeah. <laughs> well, this is perfect because Gabe, I know that you have a really special offer for all of our listeners, a free resource for them. And I feel like it goes perfectly with this conversation. So it's your game plan workbook. So this is available for everyone who's listening right now. We'll have the link below in the show notes. So you have to do is scroll down and click on it, but can you walk us through what is the game plan workbook? Yeah. So the game plan workbook is going to help you with setting goals without hustle, which is what we talked about doing it in a stress-free way, not stress-free, but stress-less way. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, But what it's going to do is it's going to help you create that deep rooted why for taking action on your goals. Mm -hmm. It's going to draft a roadmap for stepping stone goals and habits that will bring you from the start to the finish in that no hustle way. And then it's also going to help you reflect on your progress each week. Like we talked about just now, the reset so that you're not just working hard and going around in circles. You actually are being very strategic in how you're doing it. So you don't have to waste time. Oh, that's so beautiful. I love that so much. I mean, the anti-hustle and not wasting time and just being really, you know, I host the Live by Design podcast and my business is the Live by Design Co. It's all about living by design and not by default. And I feel like this game plan workbook is like the perfect proactive approach to the week. That's so beautiful. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had a great time and I hope you did too. Before we go though, make sure you follow the podcast on your favorite listening platform if you haven't already. If you resonate with this episode, please consider leaving a review on iTunes or share it with a friend as this helps grow the podcast. Also, if you're not a part of Simplicity and Motherhood, consider joining us. It's a free online community built to provide support and encouragement so you can create balance and live intentionally as you go after your biggest goals, God's way. Head on over to redhotmindset.com for more resources and to find the link to join the community. In all things I pray, you just run your race. I believe in you.